we are actually getting addicted to checking our messages every few minutes. You know right now, at this moment, a lot of you out there, you can feel your hand twitching, can't you? It's sort of like, <laughs> maybe I can just quick get a glance. He won't know. No, no, I gotta just quick, quick. You can't help it. Scientists show that they were able to train a rat to learn a maze in record time by rewarding it with checking its messages. <laughs> Technology has brought us mobile work. It's transformed the whole concept of being in an office. You might have originally been working out of a nice office that looks something like this. And now, thanks to mobile work and technology, it looks more like this. <laughs> Always on the go. Feature humor at your conference. Your audience will love it, and it will refresh them for the rest of your meeting agenda. Now here's how I ensure the humor is always appropriate and funny for savvy business audiences. I create customized presentations. I research your company, profession, conference topics, and then remain in contact as I develop smart satire that provides true comic relief. Technology was supposed to also make it easier for us to communicate but actually, the question is, how do you reach somebody? They're now barricaded behind all these various email addresses, phone numbers, Skype, Google Mail, all these things. How do you actually reach somebody? You can have two clients going back and forth for days at a time. It's kind of like cyber whack-a-mole trying to find a connection. Here's what social media has done to our social skills. You've seen this, right? Two colleagues out for a business lunch, and instead of speaking with each other, they're engrossed in their phones. And you know what's really sad? They're texting to each other. <laughs> I know, crazy, right? They could be making a Skype video call and then they could see each other's faces in their screens. <laughs> autocorrect, don't you love autocorrect? You know what autocorrect does. Autocorrect thinks it's so smart that it's gonna correct what it perceives to be your mistakes and change it to what it thinks is what you're trying to say. So what happens, you'll send out a text that you typed, you thought I'm forever indebted to you, will come out I'm forever inept to you. <laughs> or who knew the meeting deadline would be a mistake, it comes out who knew the meet dead would be a stake. <laughs> or you might write after passing gas station, bear to left, and it comes out after passing gas strategically, best to leave. An app is out now, very exciting, and allows you to speak to your phone. It transcribes it into a text message, sends it to the recipient's phone, and a voice synthesizer speaks the message. Isn't that amazing? Do you know what? That's almost like making a phone call. <laughs> so because of our addiction to social media and all the things that we have to do with our work, we need time management to try to balance all this out. And one of the most important components of time management is multitasking. Now, as you know, multitasking is the ability to perform several tasks simultaneously without paying sufficient attention to any of the tasks. That's what <laughs> multitasking is. That's because our brain can't do more than one thing at a time. You want proof? We can't even walk and text without causing problems. Did you know this is true, that in London, they're actually putting pads on street lamps so people don't hurt themselves? You know what we should do instead? If you want to text and walk, you should have to wear a padded suit. Hey, how about booking travel online? That's a big time saver. Do you do this a lot now? It allows you to go in, you can select your flights, and they even let you select your seats, but have you noticed that no matter when you book a flight, you could book a flight in the year 2018 to LA, and it will come back and it will say, uh, we only have middle seats all the way back by the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's all we have. And then now, because of all the new requirements for you know, security and travel and all of that, and that they're trying to upsell all the time and get more money out of you, you have to fill out this form before you can complete your transaction and book your ticket. And that does slow you down. A little bit of thinking involved in what you want to do with this. Finally, you're done, you're ready. Okay, now I can get my ticket. And it's like, oh, sorry, those seats were sold out while you're filling out that form. Do you know who developed PowerPoint, by the way? Interesting history about this. It was developed by the people at LensCrafters. Yes, what better way to increase your customer base than to develop a program where people will sit in a darkened room for hours on end looking at slides that appear like this. By the end of the day, they will be in need of corrective vision. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot overemphasize the importance 
of cramming in as many acronyms into your communications as you possibly can because it is a big time saver. Let me show you, for example, you might get an email that says something like this, FYI, CFO needs a RISA, USEB, SCP, PBCG, CAA, OPED, ADEP. You, you actually understand this, don't you? <laughs> oh. Well, I don't have to go further into that. It seems you already know your acronyms. And I can add topics such as cybersecurity, big data, or the benefits of sustainability. Mm -hmm.